on the member in this figure by an equivalent result in force. So very first thing is let us find the result in force. Uh, result in force for this one, I've got look, this is uh, I've got two forces acting. So some of the two forces is zero. Uh, I've got one force acting here and I've got one force acting here. So I do some of all the force along x, y. I get my 300 uh, and I get my 350 here. Excuse me. Uh, so that's basically I get my, my x component from here because I've got the force acting here and another force acting here. So this is my x component. There's no x component of this one. This one has been canceled out, so won't take into consideration. So that's my x and y is basically this one plus this component here. So I've got the two values given here. Once I've got two values, I can get the result and I can get the angle out. So I won't go into the detail. So I can get the resultant force of uh, the resultant force. Now, that's this question I want to ask. That's the resultant force being applied uh, on the system. Uh, so that's basically on the system. I've got the resultant force being applied. Uh, uh, where it can be anywhere, it's, uh, it's basically on the object, resultant force. Now, but if I, I say that uh, I want to find the moment at point O, you know what to do then. Where is it? Uh, Come on, have we done the calculations? Yes. So if I ask you to find the moment at point O, then it's basically this force multiplied by this distance. I've got the component of the two forces and its distance, and I've got this couple. This is the couple, doesn't have a distance. So this couple, where is this couple? Into one that is here. So that's these are the components of the top by the forces, and this is the moment you get. In 2D, it is relatively very easy. You can find the moment at any point. So that's the, so in the result, in the end, you got resultant force out, and you got the moment at point O. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any questions so far? So shall I move on? Yes, sir. 